everybody. Chaplain Dell here again today. And as many of you know, I am reformed in my doctrines. Uh, I was pretty much raised a Presbyterian Church of America um, um, Christian, as far as denominations go, a Calvinist, uh, kind of uh, holding to the doctrines of Tulip, which I still do. However, I think that uh, although the Lord has used many different denominations, specifically within the United States, we had a common core of Christian ethics uh, blessing this country from the time of its inception till probably the mid-1960s when we threw God out of our society. And now I'm not saying that there aren't still some fellowships, some churches that uh, preach um, the Bible in, um, in, in its fullness with uh, doctrinally uh, or, or that are theologically correct because I know there certainly are and there are certainly uh, men that have been raised up and studied in seminaries to uh, put things over quite frankly, probably better than I do, um, and, uh, you know, um, teach people about following the Lord Jesus Christ. And, of course, that starts with salvation. And my particular uh, time that I came to salvation was as a teenager, so it's been over 30 years I've been walking with the Lord. Uh, and in that time, I've noticed that um, I basically always had a lot of difficulty fitting in with other church people, and I could not understand why. And uh, I'm starting to understand why, and especially today, because you know, as in Second Timothy chapter 3, which I'm going to make some references, it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, which are difficult times. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, convetuous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incompetent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. They despise that what is good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from, and it says, from such turn away. Now, I want to get into that a little later, but I'm going to continue reading down here. For of this sort, they which to creep into houses and leave captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lust, various lusts, sexual lusts, and other things that they put before um, power lust or where they put before God. Anyway, it goes on to say this is very important also. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now what does that mean? It means they're trying to learn it with their head, but they don't have the Holy Spirit in there showing them um, what the truth really is, revealing to their human spirit what the truth of God really is. Then 8 goes on. Now as Janus and Jabberus withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth, men, corrupted minds, reprobate concerning the faith. 9. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be made manifest unto all men, as there also was. 10. But thou hast fully known by doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience. 11. Persecutions, afflictions, which come unto me at Antioch, and Icomonium, and Lystria. Excuse me, I'm not very good with these words. What uh, persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall um, suffer persecution. Okay, 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. 
imposters. Uh, you could read seducers as. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. In other words, what the Lord has shown you, move forward in that. Um, it's not just ever learning on you know, an intellectual basis and moving forward. It's an experience because you're a child of God because of the blood um, for the sons and daughters shed on the cross uh, of Jesus Christ. Okay, 15. And that the form of child thou hast known it, the holy scriptures, and that from a child thou hast known the holy, which are able to make these wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scriptures is given uh, by inspiration of God, spiritually, and is profitable for doctrine and reproof or correctness for instruction and righteousness. <clears throat> 17. That a man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay, now, I wanted to go through some of these um some of these scriptures. First of all, if we're talking to the, about the end days, the perilous times are coming. And there is a false church today. God has been blessed, has blessed this country, the United States, to um, really since its inception, uh, use the church up into the 20th century until probably, I would say, about 1965 when, when men's hearts became hardened to God and we started, uh, we started reject, rejecting uh the things of God, the truths of God, and the, the church just went right downhill with it, I might, I might add. And today we're at the point that uh, in these perilous times where God is pulling his people, people that truly know him by spirit, out of that that simply um, claims his names but has no power, ever learning and never coming to the understanding of. So what I wanted to talk about primarily today is something that happened last night to me. And uh, I'm always warned to keep my mouth shut about it, these type of things, because they're spiritual things. And I have learned, even working within the chaplaincy, that people that do not have a personal relationship in Jesus Christ, do not walk with him, do not understand spiritual events. And I've seen this since I was a child, since I was a teenager. Uh, I had... Uh, um, experienced spiritual warfare. I mean, when I was a kid, I experienced uh, things poking me under the bed. Go down the cellar, stuff would fly, the poltergeist thing. I'd have doors slam, and I always had terrifying uh, things happen to me when I was growing up. And, of course, um, I don't really want to get into that, but, you know, when I went for comfort to my Christian parents or whatever, uh, they didn't understand it, and they couldn't address it. And I've always... I've seen this thing. Of course, I ended up in street ministry some, I don't know, 20 years later, and I learned about demons, spiritual activity, walking in the spirit, how the spirit world works um, through a Bible teacher, Dr. Gross, D.D., Th.D., Ph.D., and I have been growing in the Lord ever since. But I never seemed, even going back into the, uh, the church that I grew up in, finally joining that church body, I never seemed, although their doctrines are very good and very sound, I never seemed to fit in. And it's because it's because I'm the Lord and the people and then a few that will be that find him. Because we are separate people. We're called out. And although it's the church which claims to be the bodies of, of believers, uh, that's not necessarily true. Because the bodies of believers are people that truly know him and walk with him in spirit. It's not knowing all about him, it's knowing him. And uh, last night I was um, I was awoken. I was half asleep, I would say. Uh, so I'm not really sure how to express this, but I heard my wife's voice uh, repeating back to me an offense that I had done in my flesh to her. I had... Uh, basically um, insulted her, and um, I'm not proud of it, um, in a weak moment, and uh, it had to do with her uh, appearance, and what I heard last night was virtually 
a recording of that that seemed to be coming out of her mouth. And what it really was, because I spoke to an older elder today about it that knows of spiritual things, is it was Satan having a go at me. Satan, um, it was, it was a, it was another spirit. It was a spiritual thing that I heard half asleep uh, uh, come out of my wife's mouth. And it was very disturbing because I'm not even sure, quite frankly, if her mouth was moving, if she really said it or where it was coming from. And I realized it's because it was a uh, spirit um, trying to take my focus off the Lord uh, and um, focus on myself and my own shortfalls. Um, so I would focus on that rather than focusing on the Lord. And the reason that this has happened, I believe, for the for the sake of expressing it to others, is because when I moved to this island, oh, over 20 years ago, I um, I used to pray out of street ministry. Um, I would I would get in, in my room and uh, and listen for the Lord and try to break through spiritually in my prayer. And, uh, you know, cats would scream outside, the type of thing where, uh, you know, um, the window blind would uh, all of a sudden retract, and, you know, and just different things would distract me from praying. And, uh, and I threw down my hands and I said, forget it, God, I'm not going to pray like that anymore. It's too hard. Uh, because, uh, because I was breaking through on a spiritual level. And, uh, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, I know that you have experienced that same type of, uh, of, uh, thing trying to break through in prayer. I'm not talking about, you know, um, we pray as we go. Uh, we, I pray daily throughout the day and the Lord hears me, but I'm talking about setting aside a time to really break through through with the Lord, and I told the Lord I, I would stop doing that because it was too scary for me. It's too weird, too spiritual, too mystical. I didn't like it. I didn't like have my opposition to pray spiritually. But in the last couple of days, I've been hard at uh, trying to, to uh, get back into my prayer life. And another thing concerning prayer life that I want to mention is, you know, uh, a lot of the, on the internet or uh, in churches or chaplain groups, people say, oh, Please pray for this. Please pray for that. It becomes like a, I don't know, like a, um, uh, you know, you know what a prayer request is where people ask everybody to pray for them. And of course, you know, if you're, uh, if you want to save face and a decent Christian, oh, yes, sure, I'll pray for you. Oh, I prayed for you. But you know what? Um, it's very hard to pray. So I don't like to tell people that I'm going to pray for them. And I'll go one step further than that. I'm finding out now, unless the Lord God moves me to pray for somebody, I don't feel at liberty to pray for them. It's only by when the Spirit leads me, puts upon my heart to pray for something or somebody, then I will, in fact, do it. If I don't have that leading, that freedom in the Holy Spirit to pray on a particular issue, then I normally will not. Because... It's not based on myself. It is based on God and God's leading, doing the will of our Father who is in heaven. And churches have made this thing something other than uh, allowing Lord Jesus Christ or his Holy Spirit to be in command and control of our life. So this is, this is why I'm making this little video today and why I uh, spoke about the odd occurrence that happened when I was half asleep last night. And... Um, you know, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, it's probably because you've never experienced it. Um, I'm just starting to experience it now, and I've been a Christian for over 30 years, and I'm realizing that um, Satan does not like me having a prayer life with my Lord. Satan does not like me being able to break through to the Lord and pray about things because I've seen things change instantly after I've gotten off my knees with uh, specific people, and I'm not going to mention any names, but I can see the power of that prayer life in my own life, and the, the adversary knows it as well, and the counterfeit for this, the counterfeit for prayer life and all, I'm sorry to say, is church. If the devil can get you into church, 
and being religious and being a good Christian and trying to do things from Jesus independently of listening to him and being led by him, and this uh, certainly includes one's prayer life, then he's going to try to do that because it's a distraction to break you away uh, from that communion with your Lord. You know, uh, many will come to me in that day saying, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we prophesy? Didn't we do all these wonderful things in your name? And Jesus says unto them, depart from me, I never knew you. He's talking about people that are initially saved, but do not follow the Lord in spirit. And most people, I'm sorry to say, do church rather than following Christ. And I've been guilty of this myself. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've, I've only I've been not uh, going to church for a little over a year now, and uh, I'm starting to come into some real uh, personal, powerful personal understanding because of it. And uh, and I'm realizing because the church is really Satan's counterfeit to following Christ, and you would have never have thought that was true. Most people would never think that was true, but Satan is very, very, our adversary is very, very intelligent. He's been stunning human beings for a long time, and he knows how to get uh, the saint's uh, eyes off track of following the Lord. And, of course, if you watch my other videos, um, when I was trying to be ordained as an independent Anglican, certain things happened there. And, um well, I just have a lot of, I just have some history with churches and churches wanting to ordain me, but God never allowed allowed it to happen because the Lord was saying, no, come to me. You know, Jesus saying, come to me. Let me meet your needs. You come to me. I don't want you involved in an organization. And most Christians become involved with organizations or they go to seminary or they, they build up their head knowledge. But what I'm finding as a spiritual man, it's all about functioning and moving by the Spirit as the Spirit leads you in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what the Bible is speaking about. And the Bible only speaks to God's people short of, uh, you know, evangelism type of thing. And uh, so as I grow closer in the Lord, um, you know, I'm starting to experience real battle, a real battle uh from our adversary because if you're not effective um, with the Lord you're not a threat to the to the world the flesh and the devil he's already controlling you but once you get to the point of obedience and following the Lord off the side and break into prayer for instance then you start having an effect on the world then you start knowing the power thereof I was working about in the second uh, Timothy chapter 3 um, but anyway, so that's why I want to do this little talk today, and I hope to encourage somebody. You know the Lord, to press on in there in a personal relationship with your Lord, and don't be distracted by something that you think it, you're doing for God, such as church, such as practicing, uh, I don't know. Um, something. If you're doing anything besides listening to your Lord and you're His, um, you're in sin. That's what it gets down to. You have to listen to your Lord. And don't be distracted by things that claim his name but are really not. You have to learn. It. It's a very intimate thing. And also, once you start doing this, you will be persecuted, as it speaks of in the scriptures. And um, i am experienced a whole lot of this. So, um, I hope this little uh, video today, actually, it's pretty long. Uh, will help will encourage somebody's heart that's um, truly um, trying to follow their Lord. Bye.